today? Gray hair is a sign of wisdom. Yes. But how many know, those of us with gray hair, man, we can work. It's only, a, it's only an outward sign of wisdom. But we got energy. We got youth like the eagles. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Youth like the eagles. Praise God that he renews our strength. Sometimes you feel tired. How many feel tired sometimes? Sometimes you feel weary. Sometimes you feel frustrated. But he renews our strength like the eagles. Praise the Lord. The Lord works righteousness for the justice and for the oppressed. He sees when you're oppressed. He sees when you're hurting. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Praise God for that or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love to those that fear him. See, that's the, that's the beginning of wisdom when we fear the Lord. You don't have to fear the things of this world, I wanna tell you that. Don't, don't fear the things that people say to you. Don't fear the threats that people have given you. Don't fear the fact that you're, you're living on the street. Don't fear the fact that you're at Safe Harbor. Don't fear the fact that you're surrounded by people that have maybe threatened you. You don't need to worry about that. If your faith is in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, the Bible says that fear of the Lord is wisdom. And so put your fear in the Lord. If you fear God, you fear nothing else. Amen. You don't have to fear sickness. You don't have to fear threats from anybody. You don't have to fear physical harm. You don't have to fear anything like that because the Lord will protect his people. Amen. That is a promise from him for his people. He loves you so much, he wants you to come to him. Jesus is there with open arms. Jesus is there to receive you today. But he, you have to make that choice. You see, it began very on in the, in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve had to make a choice. They had to choose good or evil. And there's a choice that you all have to make today. Will you choose life or will you choose death? The choice is yours, the choice has always been ours. Will we choose the life that God has come to give us? Because the Bible says that the enemy, Satan, and the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life, and life more abundantly, amen? That's a promise that we have in Jesus Christ. When Jesus is in our lives, let me tell you something. He promises to never leave you nor forsake you. Hi, Ryan. Good to see you, brother. I'm still, I still need to get one of those uh, walking sticks. I just feel like I'm kind of left out without my walking stick. So, At some point, praise the Lord, a walking stick's coming my way, right? Amen. Amen. But Jesus promises to never leave us nor forsake us. He walks with us. He walks with us no matter what we're going through. He doesn't promise an easy life. How many know that? He doesn't promise an easy life. He says you will have troubles, you will have tribulations. But he says, take heart. Take heart for I have overcome the world. So everything that you see, all the, all the problems and everything like that, his hand is very much on the steering wheel still. He has never taken his hands off the steering wheel. God is very much in control but he asks that we follow him he asks that we put him first that we make a decision to follow Jesus Christ it says for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his love who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from him isn't that awesome to know that the sin that you have that you've the things that you've done when you come to Jesus and you ask for forgiveness he gives you a clean slate. You are justified through him. Just say, I'm justified through faith. Say it again, I'm justified through faith. And what that means is it's just as you've never sinned. That's what he looks at you when you confess, when you repent of all your sin. He washes it completely clean. It's as far as the east is from the west. It's as deep as the deepest ocean where you never see it again. See, the world would want you to be reminded that 
God can't forgive you. I've done too much. Hey, Kevin. Good to see you, brother. The world would like to say, no, you've done too much. Well, the world would like to say, you're, you're always going to be in this place. Things are never going to change. Let me tell you something. Those are curse words. Those are curse words from the pit of hell. And you need to fight those curse words in Jesus' name. If people have spoken against you and said, you're always going to be a failure. You're always going to be homeless. You're no good. You disappointed me. How can you live like this? They will say things like that. What you need to do is if you're a believer in Jesus, and we're going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus today. If you're a believer in Jesus, you can come at the devil. You can come at the accuser because people will accuse you and curse you. You can say, in the name of Jesus, I do not receive those curse words in Jesus' name. I do not receive those words. I am a child of the living God. I am a prince. I am an heir to the throne. I am a princess. When you look at it that way and you look at Jesus loved you so much that he died on the cross for your sins because he wanted you to have life and life more abundantly today. And so we have a God that loves you so much that wipes away all of your sin. What an amazing thing. As Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. <laughs> we're all just dust. That's how we were created, out of the dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like the flowers of the field. The wind blows over it and is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. It's in his righteousness with his children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and in his kingdom. He rules over all. Praise the Lord, you angels, for you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey the word of God, his word. Praise the Lord, all you heavenly hosts. You, his servants, who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works. And everyone in his dominion. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a praise today for who he is. Let's just put our hands together and praise God for who he is today. You know, and as I was reading the word of God today, we took our church through a 90-day Bible reading plan where we're reading the Bible in 90 days. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? 90 days, we're going to go through the whole Bible. And the Bible's just come to life to me over this last while. The Bible's always been real to me, but reading it in 90 days just comes to life. And just seeing all the miracles that Jesus has done, how Jesus has set the captives free. He came that you would have freedom and no longer be in bondage to sin. He came in freedom that you would no longer be in captivity to sin. And Jesus healed people. If you look at the New Testament, if you go through the whole Gospels, all four Gospels, they talk about the healing power of Jesus. There's a story where this woman was feeling very sick. She had, a, she had an infirmity. She was bleeding for 12 years, the Bible says. 12 years she was bleeding. The Bible says she spent lots of money on doctors and all this other stuff and, and all the resources, but nobody could help her. So one day Jesus was walking through the crowd and Jesus was going to heal somebody else. But as he's walking through the crowd, the crowd gathered around him. He felt, he felt somebody touch his robe. And the woman said, if I could only touch his robe, if I could just touch his robe, I could be healed in Jesus name. She believed that if she just touched even his robe, she would be healed. She did everything possible to get to Jesus. The Bible says that he felt the power go out of him. He was looking to for who had touched him. And he looked at her and he said, Daughter, your faith has healed you in Jesus' name. And so I want to encourage you today, no matter what pain that you have in your life, no matter what depression you have in your life, no matter if you have mental illness, no matter if you have fear, no matter if you have cancer, no matter if you have some sort of disease, I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ is the name that is above every other name. That the name of Jesus, every knee would bow on heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is truly 
Lord. You see, Jesus, everything comes under the name of Jesus. It's why you can say God in public. You can say God and people won't be offended. The minute you say Jesus, boy, that can offend a lot of people. You either get people giving you a high five saying, oh, that's awesome that you love Jesus, or you have people looking at you, scoffing at you, because they know, even the demons know the power that is in the name of Jesus. And so there is power in the name of Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus that miracles happen. It is in the name of Jesus that he sets you free today. And so today, I just want to give you an opportunity for all those that are here. There's some that are sitting on the bench, some that are walking by, some that are walking through here. If you want to have Jesus in your life, if you want Jesus to walk with you because you can't do this on your own. None of us can do this life on our own. None of us can live the life that we're called to live without Jesus. So today, if there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to know it all. You don't have to know everything, but all he's asking for is, do you believe in him? Do you believe the Bible says? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead to die for your sins and my sins? It says, today is the day of salvation. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. So today I want to give you an opportunity. You don't have to know all the answers. But I want to give you an opportunity if you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm not going to embarrass you today. I'm just going to ask that you'd raise your hand with me when I ask you to raise your hand. Is there anybody here today? that would want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you just raise your hand with me right now? I see that hand on that bench. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God sees that hand as well, too. Is there any other hands? There's another hand there. Thank you, Lord. There's two hands that want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior today. I tell you, your life will never be the same. But I want you to repeat after me before you leave here. Say, with those with their hands up or those that are around, just say, Dear Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. I repent. I repent. I turn from all my sin. I turn from all my sin. And I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, I invite you to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of hope. It's the beginning of a new life with Jesus. But listen, it's not the end. It's just the start. You need to get a Bible. We'll get you a Bible. You need to get into God's Word. You need to get a good church. If you don't have a good church, I pastor the remnant, which is just over here in that brick building. If you, need a, if you need a church to go to, so important that you're in the community of the church. And we believe in discipleship. I preach a discipleship message every week, which makes us more like Jesus. So let's just thank God for all that he's doing today. Let's thank God for all that he's doing. Let's, get, let's put our hands together for these two people, Lord, that decided to follow him today. The Bible says there's a party going on in heaven when just one comes to the Lord. So let's just praise God for all that he's doing in Jesus' name. Amen.